In Mali, it's different. It's um, desperately poor. It's desolate. It's sub-Sahara. The medical needs here are staggering. It's hard to, without living here, it's hard to really even believe it. In 2005, they were quoting a maternal mortality of 10%. So 10% of the women in this country died as a complication of childbirth. So that, that, that's a number that's hard to even fathom. I mean, one in 10 women in America, can you imagine dying as a complication of childbirth? I mean, most, you know, I think it's maybe one in 20 or 30,000 in America. And most people don't even know an American who died as a complication of childbirth or even, even personally or even heard of one. In Africa, two things can shut you down faster than anything else. One's not having energy and one's not having water. And so to try and do any project, but even just a village life, clean water is, is absolutely central. And uh, you know, we take it for granted in the West, um, but just drilled wells with, with, safe, with safe water access, um, you know, it's absolutely crucial. And so we go in there and try to really meet basic needs like water, like um, medical, just basic medical needs. The conditions there in Mali are, are so desperate that any little bit of help you can provide really goes a long way. My name is Ian Vickers and I'm the Chief Executive Officer for Global Partners in Hope. Like Global Partners in Hope is, does community development work. So whether it's in China or whether it's in Africa, we're essentially trying to develop communities across the globe. And we talk about um, providing uh, bridges of opportunity for people who can help to people who need hope. So we, uh, we go in and we'll build two clinics um, in a village. We'll build a, put in a well, a sustainable well, not a well that just goes down a little bit, but it will go down far enough where you can hit water that will last for a long time. And then we'll um, put in a maternity ward and kind of a pharmacy a general um, examination room for, for people. And the idea is that if you can take care of those basic needs, at least people will be healthy enough if they need to do major surgery or major work, they can get healthy enough to get to those kind of facilities. And where we go, it's, it's um, so far out there. In fact, the place we, we went to one time was um, called literally the ends of the earth. There's no road, there's just, and you get out there and there's like tons of people out there and you're like, where do these people come from? One of the things that's been exciting for us as an organization is to partner with um, the Omaha Public Schools. That relationship started as a result of a conversation with a magnet coordinator named Christian Lamontia. And Christian approached me and said, hey, um, we'd like to do a project that would impact the world. And of course, you know, there's lots of things that are happening in the world. But the fact that we were an Omaha-based nonprofit, I think, made a lot of difference for her in terms of you know, uh, an organization you can trust, and then uh, some sort of concrete, tangible project that kids could wrap their minds around and understand. We started a project um, several years ago, Meals for Molly, where we packaged meals to send over to malnourished children and nursing mothers. The years have gone by and we kind of were looking for a service learning project and I knew Ian had started a nonprofit organization and I contacted him and said, what do you have going on? And he's like, you're not going to believe this, but we're putting wells in Mali, Africa. And I said, we would be interested. And then it just kind of snowballed from that. My principal and I sat down and decided um, that this would be an excellent project for us to grab a hold of. We started it off with a huge assembly with a um, couple students from University of Nebraska at Lincoln and presented to the children um, the need of water and how we can't survive without water and how the children have to walk miles and miles and carry 40 pound buckets to bring back. and. Um, it just started and grew and we collected change. We even had a student uh, contact Bakers and he rang a bell, his family and my family, for four hours and he raised almost $400. I was thinking maybe I, I could find a way to make more money for them to be as fortunate as we could and I was just thinking of different ways and then I came up with the Baker ringing for Bakers. We rang bells. We rang bells, huh? So you were out ringing bells too? Yeah, for yeah. four hours. <laughs> was it cold? Yeah. Was yeah. it fun? Yeah. 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 She took, Miss LaMontia took one bucket, I took another two buckets, and then we counted the money, 
and then we got a total of, I don't remember the total. 357. $357. Awesome. It makes me feel happy that I made a big difference in what they can do and what they're able to have now. And it makes me good, feel good that I get to have that capability and I have the, I know that I'm able to succeed and do something like that again. We had a student who grabbed hold of the project and in her apartment complex made a huge sign asking all of her neighbors to donate change. Um, we sold t-shirts and we just wrapped it back into economics and just uh, made a huge learning experience out of this. I thought it would be awesome to give back to the community after like all of the water that we've wasted. It'd be good to give back and kind of like make up for it. I know I, it was kind of amazing how many buckets that I, when, I, when I walked in here most of the days, it was amazing to see Miss Lamontia and other fellow students here. They were like had huge bags of buckets that said Molly and they had globe on it and it was white and they were putting one penny in it, like every single bottle. And it was amazing to see how many of those bottles we filled up. So how many bottles did they fill up here? I'm, I don't know exactly, but I think 20. 20? 200. 200? They filled up 200? Yeah. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. What happened was after that, Dr. McKeel, the superintendent of, of the schools, um, uh, learned about the project and actually uh, graciously invited us to present that to uh, all the principals. So um, we started presenting the principals, and, and it kind of grew from there to now we have uh, 11 schools. So it's exciting for us to be able to have this kind of citywide connection where we as a local nonprofit are connecting with schools in our city. Kristen and Ian presented at a principal's meeting in October, and as they were presenting and going through a PowerPoint talking about the importance of the Molly Well Project, I sat there within probably the first five seconds of their presentation and thought, this is what I want to do at Ponca. This will be a great project for Ponca. The parents will embrace it. The community will embrace it, the students will embrace it, and even the staff will. I just, within the first few minutes, um, I knew that this is something that we wanted to do. Um, after the principal's meeting, I called uh, Kristen right away and told her that Ponca was very interested and we want to get involved as soon as possible. One of the things that we try to do as an organization is make these, these projects very real for people. Um, you know, we turn on the TV and we see a lot of different things that are happening in the world, but really unsure of how to connect. Can we trust this organization? What are they really doing? So for us to be a local organization in Omaha, then to connect with kids here in our community was really important, but also to make it real. And so one of the ideas we had is, well, how, how could we make it as real as possible to these kids? And so of course they, they had the projects to, to raise the funds to help put in a well. When this started um, and I sat down with Ian, I just, I said, oh, I bet we can bring in $1,000. I was like, yeah, we can do that. It just was, to me, a service learning project where we could educate the children, make a small impact. I did not know that the children could bring in over $5,000 and have an understanding that they can make a difference. We sold like chips and juice every Friday. Um, we had a movie night at our school, so we did like all kinds of fundraiser things to raise money. Well, we sat outside of our lunchroom and we got everyone's spare change. And there was a movie night where we all got together at, after school. We watched an international movie, sold chips, admission, all those things. I enjoyed like helping, well, I like helping people. So I like seeing like smiles on people's faces and they showed us pictures of them smiling and them having clean water and them actually smiling because they have people who help them. And this year we got together with all of the school district and then we got we got enough to build one whole well and that is like $16,000. So I felt just great. Well, I would tell them that if they were to help, they would see the difference and they would be really proud of themselves like I am. Then what we did was we, we thought it'd be great to have representatives from the Omaha Public Schools, so a couple teachers. So the natural fit was Mrs. Lamontia and then um, uh, Mindy Grimm, who's a principal at Ponca Elementary, to join us on a trip. To physically go there, see the project, see the actual well, see where the next well's gonna go in. 
and then to be able to uh, report that back to the kids so that the kids felt like, hey, this is this is very real. This is something that, you know, it's not some organization doing it, but it's people whom we know. I remember Kristen saying, you need to sit down, that I have something wonderful to talk to you about. And as I sat down, as she was talking about it, I got goosebumps. I thought, what a fantastic, fantastic experience. Also to bring this experience back to the kids and talk about why we're raising money and be able to show them where the money that they raised went. We went and now we can bring it back and we're showing the well and we're showing that Mindy and I were there and they can actually feel what we felt on a smaller scale. Um, but just their love and their smiles of like, I did this. You know, I'm a five-year-old and I made a difference. I remember on the plane trip home, it was Chris and I were talking and I said, how do you express everything that we experience there to make sure that the parents, the community, and the kids really understand what we did and what we felt when we went there. And I think just that conversation, I think going, we're going in classrooms and showing pictures and video and just expressing our experience. And from the day at home and I, we put a bulletin board up the first day I was back and I put up all the Molly pictures that I had and we talked about how much money we raised. But from the day I got back from Africa, I had students coming to me and saying, okay, what can we do next to raise money? What can we, what can we do now? Is there another well we can help with? So just their excitement of this is what we did, look what we did, look how we helped the children and the families to what can we do next. The impact on our children is, it just can't be measured. I, I can't explain it when, I mean, when we gave them a container, we put a lucky penny inside and said, this is luck that you're going to be bringing back to Molly. And they just understood that any small amount, no matter how much, they didn't have to raise hundreds of dollars. It was just their change. And their change can make a difference around the world to help these children and these mothers and these families who can't go to a faucet and turn on water. They just, now they understand how blessed we are here in the United States and how in a third world country, it's not like their home. And it was, it's fun to have them along. It's fun to be able to expose them to the needs that, that exist and then for them to physically see and take a picture in front of a well of here you are, this is what we've talked about, this is what you've seen pictures of, but now you're sitting in front of it. And then to hold, have kids in Africa that we've been working with who are going to be deeply impacted by these efforts, hold up a sign that says, thank you, Omaha Public Schools, for what you've done. So um, to us, that's just a great bridge. It's a great, great connection for, uh, for the kids here to the kids there in Mali.